Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm Val Renner, and today we have with us someone that is, I'd like to say, one of Akron's famous sons. I have the fabulous guitarist, Neil Zaza, with us today. Welcome, Neil. Thank you. Good to be here. It's great to be here. great to have you here, and another prodigy, another son of Akron. I really do call myself from Akron, you know, because yeah. everyone always puts me in this Cleveland box, like, from oh. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Hang on, wait a minute. It's Akron. Yeah. So it's, it's always been Akron for me. So uh, I grew up in Macedonia. Okay. I went to Akron U. Okay, and, you're a zip. Uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's always been, I, I always have to correct people, but it's always really, it's, it's Akron. And, <laughs> and I always said that before LeBron started saying, I'm from Akron, <laughs> you know, so. It's, I'm well, home. he was misunderstood too. Yeah. I mean, we never got mad at him. We, we loved him just from. the same because he was an Akron boy, right? We, we knew. But, you know, once you're 330, you're always 330. This is true. Yeah. And Google that if you people don't know what that means. <laughs> so you're going to be here at the Civic, mm -hmm. and we're really excited to have you. But we want to talk to you a little bit, get to know you a little bit before sure. the show. And then after the show, people can follow you. I'm sure they will exactly. on your website and such. But so you have been playing guitar for a few years now. Yes, mm -hmm. a few years. We won't talk about how many years, but I put some time in. Yeah. yeah, and it's finally to a point where success. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, really, when I was young, all I ever wanted to do was play guitar. Like, you know, okay. it, I'd be in school and I'd be thinking about playing guitar. Or, you know, I'd have my folder and instead of like Playboy or something like that, I would have Guitar Player <laughs> Magazine. And I would, when I was young, I would have maybe a, a bogus phone soliciting job or something oh, like okay. that. And, you know, I'd be on the phone, uh, Mrs. Smith, uh, we'll be in your area <laughs> doing basement waterproofing. And I'm like looking through Guitar Player Magazine thinking like <laughs> what I'm going to buy with that money, you know, pedal wise or amps. Yeah. So it's always, it's always been about playing guitar for me. And it's, it's something... Wow. Um, I never really made the career choice of, you know, what, what do I want to do? Do I want to do I, it's, it's just been a natural path for me. It's, I, I've never wanted to do anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how old were you when you picked up the guitar for the first I time? Was, I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, like a lot of my influences, uh, Van Halen, I heard. Okay. And my, my story I always tell, and I never deviate from it because it mm -hmm. is the truth, is I remember the first time I heard Van Halen 1. Okay. I was in the back seat of a, my buddy's brother's car, and we're just <laughs> cruising around, and, uh, and he puts in the 8-track the track of, yes. the, of Van Halen 1. I don't I, know what you're talking about. Well, Go ahead. 8-track, <laughs> puts it in, and we're in the back, and the speakers are hissing loud. And, it's like, um, and if uh, anyone knows the song Running With The Devil, mm -hmm. it's this intro car horn thing, boom, boom. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. And on that chord, uh, I, I'm not even joking. I say like, it's like the, the sky opened up uh -huh. and like angels started singing and there was like a light directly on me and was like, that's it. I'm done. I, wow. was, I, was, I was hooked and I would never have gainful employment again in my life. <laughs> And that, 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 was, that was a path. So when I, when I heard those, you know, Van Halen won that record, that changed it for me. Mm -hmm. So then growing up, I listened to, you know, like Journey. That was one of my mm -hmm. favorite bands and Boston and, and things like that. And from that point on, I just started learning all those songs and um, just followed the path of the masters mm -hmm. of those guys, you right. know, for me. Right. Yeah. So the first gig, what was it? Um, well, I used to play, I used to play at church, you know, like yeah. at, at guitar mass, you know, when I was like a little kid. And, <laughs> Love it. So that was a thing. But the, the, the real first gig that I had, uh, it, it was, it was uh, with a band called Zaza. I, I formed a, a band back in oh, the okay. early 80s. And uh, I went to Akron U, more, mm -hmm. more Akron stuff, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, we opened for uh, a band called The Innocent at, uh, at the hilltop where the cafeteria yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that band, Trent Reznor was the keyboard player, which, you know, kind of ironic. But so the very first gig, I was supposed to count off the set. So, you know, big, please walk off the Zaza, you know, <laughs> drums are going crazy. <laughs> that so happened we, when you walked in, too. <laughs> right, exactly. So playing, and I had to count off like, like a Springsteen thing, like mm -hmm. one, two, three, you know, like, and I remember I counted and I was running and I literally 
kind of got off balance and I oh, fell no. and I just slid across the stage on my guitar oh, and no. we had to stop the music and um but did you make it look like it was planned no no there was oh, there okay. was no getting out of it all right so really um <laughs> from that point though I realized like that was so degrading and humiliating to me that I said there nothing nothing that could happen to me could ever be that bad so if, if uh, you know, as I'm playing here, you know, for the show at the yeah. Civic, if something happens, it doesn't it's even affect me bad. because as long as I'm not sliding on a stage <laughs> on my guitar, I'm going to be okay. So, that would have been a great trick, though. Maybe you should incorporate that into one of your shows. Yeah, you know? even, I didn't even get a sympathy applause. They were just like <laughs> gasping, like, oh, did you see that? You know, so it. Uh, Is that how you got the hairstyle? Because oh, it just like, yeah. <laughs> that windswept look from like on the floor so but uh yeah you see everything everything surrounds Akron doesn't it it does even the hairstyle so, yeah. I mean you know what can you do so okay so you go on from this gig uh, Zaza yeah the band Zaza and what then I mean does it get to a point where I've played everywhere I can play what's my next step because there's a lot of young kids out there yeah. that look up to you and what happened next after that? It's, it's, it's a good question and one that I still try to figure out exactly. <laughs> but, but, but really the path is, as a musician, mm -hmm. it's easy to emulate people that we like, no matter what mm -hmm. instrument, whether it's guitar or drums, any, any, any musical entity, you always want to emulate your, your idols and people right. that you, you grew up listening to. But at that point, I started really trying to develop who I was and what mm -hmm. I sounded like. like. You know, we already know what Eddie Van Halen sounds like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the question is, you know, who is Neil Zaza? Right. What do I like? Let's stop trying to sound like someone and, and really kind of experience who I am. Mm -hmm. So from that point, I started playing um, instrumental guitar, which is, which is what I do today, which is there's mm -hmm. no singer, but I always maintain the singing is there. It's just mm -hmm. the guitar is replacing right. the singer with the melody. Mm -hmm. And... I just really started writing my own songs, and mm -hmm. and uh, they were all horrible, you know. But you know, you have to get, you have to learn how to write songs. You have yeah. to learn how to perform. You have to learn um, how to do all that kind of stuff. So um, I just started putting out some some records and CDs and tapes, and it it started to, to get out. And uh, I guess to to cut to the punchline of the story is uh, in about. Uh, 2001, I was invited to uh, a festival in South Korea, and I just thought, wow, I've, I've never been out yeah. of the country, and I know my records had been distributed over there, but uh, I don't know anything about this. this you know. mm -hmm. So we got the band together, we went over to South Korea, and it was, it was, uh, it was on this beach in uh, Busan, South Korea, and uh, did the sound check, I'm like, man, this is pretty big, because it, you know, it's like expansive, <laughs> and... Um, walked on stage when, uh, and of course they don't tell me anything, like okay. I don't know where I'm at in the set or, you know, they don't warn me about anything. Okay. So finally I, uh, all these opening bands and I'm one of the headliners, I don't know why, I walk <laughs> out and I walk out and it's like 30,000 people. Oh my gosh. Um, and they're all holding up like signs of like, we love you. And uh, I have a, my big song over there, it's called I'm All Right, I'm All Right and you know, and, and they know all the songs and like if I if I uh, maybe stopped and went like this they're humming the melodies and, oh my gosh and so then uh, after wow. that we did the the meet and greet and uh, they're Zaza Zaza because they just call me Zaza you know <laughs> and they have the ringtones and all. like <laughs> That's well, how did great. All this, who's getting paid yeah. for this because I'm not you know but it, it was it was it was great so yeah. so from that point I just started touring Asia, all throughout Asia and, and Europe, and it's just, it's, it's been a work in progress, yeah. but you know, that's, that's what happens yeah. for me, so. That's exciting though. I, I would think, and I've heard this before from some of the entertainers, that the biggest compliment and the biggest thrill is when you hear the audience singing your song, but in your case, humming your song. Which is even more so because they, there's no, English words or there's no right. words for them so right. then that means it really is absorbing in so yeah. it's um overseas it, it's it's pretty fanatical mm -hmm. when, I, when I play and it's 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 really good crowds and it's uh, mm -hmm. they really 
listen to the music. And I, I've been really honored by mm -hmm. being able to go over and tour the world and play. And mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's exciting that it always comes back to this. Music brings people together. Absolutely. No matter what. I mean, it can be in any language. It can be just an instrumental, but it brings people together. You know what's interesting is uh, the, the different the different reactions or the different demographics at the shows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, United States, um, I have some great fans. Mm -hmm. And of course, being hometown, I have some incredible fans. But uh, there's, a, there's a, a guitar player mentality where, you know, I always joke like, it's a bunch of dudes like, <laughs> I can do that. Sucks. <laughs> you know, I can do that better, right? <laughs> but, but overseas in Asia, um, it's, it's young and old, mm -hmm. it's guys and girls. Mm -hmm. They're not, uh, they're, of course, they're into the, I call it the whittly diddly of the guitar, mm -hmm. but they, they like the music. It's a whole different approach to it rather than, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of guitar players like, What's that riff? Oh, he missed that note. You right, know, it's right. it's more. It's not so competitive. Exactly it's, it's right. It's a feeling. Yeah, it's a exactly feeling right. that you're emitting to them, and they just want to right. feel that back to actually put it through their guitar. Exactly. So, exactly. so no other instrument ever got to you. Just the guitar, huh? Just the guitar. I wish, uh, you know, we all have regrets when we're younger. I wish we would have done, or I would have done. Yeah. I wish I would have. Uh, learn keyboard okay. his keyboards they own the world mm -hmm. they can do all kind of stuff mm -hmm. i wish i i had the voice to sing i, I don't yeah. there's a reason i play instrumental guitar <laughs> <laughs> but uh but i always love to hear that i always love when an instrument an instrumentalist just plays that lick and and you think it's them singing. I really believe right. that. I've watched your videos. And, you know, you're, you're doing everything but, you know, whoa, singing it out loud because you're just so intense on that guitar. Yeah, you, you definitely, you're conveying the melody or the essence of the song. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it, it, it certainly is, a, is an approach because, like, how I uh, approach the arrangement of my music, I, I certainly think in terms of verse, chorus, bridge, solo, mm -hmm chorus out or whatever so some people i'll say hey in the solo of that song they will say whoa the whole song's a solo mm -hmm. i know it's not it's it's the melodies <laughs> and then all of a sudden now here's the part where i solo but we're back to the melody so mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit of an education process mm -hmm. every time i play because right. i think sometimes people don't know what to expect is am i going to come out and just blaze the whole night and I, mm -hmm. I i i throw that in there but you know you kind of mix it in with things mm -hmm. that real people want to hear right. not just guitar players exactly yeah. so what's your favorite song if i was just going to listen to to something to relax or uh -huh. maybe you know the, the the ironic thing is i don't listen to guitar music okay. because like all day i'm it's yeah. guitar guitar i don't i don't so right. my big thing is brian mcknight Oh, yeah. Like, Brian McKnight is it. Yeah, and we had him here. Yeah. yeah. We had him at the Civic. Everyone plays the yeah, Civic, Yeah, I right? know, I know. That's but he, he's, to... he's so incredible because the, the songs are great, the, the chords are great. He, mm -hmm. He's such a natural talent. Mm -hmm. So I like things way off the beaten path like that. So Brian mm -hmm. McKnight, yeah, Brian yeah. McKnight. So. Well, that, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Do you, okay, so now let's, let's move on to another facet of your career. You teach. Yeah. And it seems like people really want your music to buy it, mm -hmm. to play it. So when did all that start to happen? Did you see this like, hey, this really is a business. This isn't just, you know, me playing the guitar. It's getting out there and touching as many people right. in different avenues that I can go on. Well, it's um, at some point when you're, when you're young, you think it's always about you know, let's get out there, stay out late, meet some chicks, you know, mm -hmm. like it's all about all the, the frivolous things of, of music. But then in the end, you realize like, you know, we have to eat, <laughs> you know, it, it, there has to be. Mama's got to eat. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, I've always, I've always treated it though, like a business in, in the mm -hmm. sense that um, I'm always really serious about it mm -hmm. and, and I don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I I think I work harder than a lot of people because, you know, you have to be a self-starter mm -hmm, to, right. to do this. You can't, you know, if right. I waited for a, a manager or some mm -hmm. booking agent or some, mm -hmm. someone to, to self-start, mm -hmm. uh, it, it never happens because no one wants to see us succeed like we do. Right. So I, I think That's true. even early on, I, I realized that, 
you know, I, I need to, I need, need to make things happen, mm -hmm. you know, myself. So, mm -hmm. um, in that, you know, you, we put out the records now and now we are just releasing, or I'm releasing guitar tabs for all the music mm -hmm. and the books. I the, saw that. The music books and all. Mm -hmm. So, you just, you kind of got to give the people what they want, you mm -hmm. know, and, and so a lot of these kids, you know, they love the music. The next natural step is, how do I play that, right? right? right. So, mm -hmm. all right, well, here's how you play, here's how I play it, right. you know. So. Well, maybe we could start a show. Yeah. Yeah, the Neil and Val show. And like, I think we already have the chemistry I, going. I think, it's, I think it's a hit, because yeah. you're Italian. Well, of course. Uh, so what? So, you know, you can't probably see what we're doing, but we're using our hands an awful lot to talk, because mm -hmm. I think we're only cut, yeah. So what did Mama Zaza say about <laughs> this career? Um, <laughs> She, she, you know, they were a little <laughs> hesitant, you know. It's a and, great uh, word. They always complained, <laughs> you know. Everything was, you know. Um, they, they were supportive as much as, you know, they could. But ultimately, you know, I pushed the issue. You yeah. Know? Um, well, you I know, think of course you can come tell. home with earrings one day. I know. Like, like my son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know. They, they were supportive, but again. You know, they, they helped me, they, they gave me the foundation. So yeah. when I was young, they, they paid for guitar lessons at the YMCA. And then I said, I want to go oh, study. Uh, I, want, I was into classical guitar because mm -hmm. of this one guitar player named Randy Rhodes. Mm -hmm. So I went to University of Akron mm -hmm. for three, three and a half years, studied under Stephen Aaron, who was a professor mm -hmm. there. And so they gave me all the, the tools to, you know, they, right. they gave me enough support, right. you know, and throughout the whole thing though you know are you gonna get a real job do you have insurance do you you know and so i take the heat of it yeah but then when they're at the show yeah that's my boy yeah. that's my son <laughs> i'm so proud do you see that that's my boy and then after the show are you gonna get health insurance are you, are you gonna get a real job what, you know so it always drove me crazy <laughs> You, you give me the voices give me in nothing. your head. Yeah. That's right. So. Aw, but that's that's a good environment to grow up with. You know that it's supportive because it's so hard. I mean, the music yeah. the music industry, and I think the smartest musicians understand that it's a business, no yeah. matter what. And you know, to survive, you have to have a business mind. And I see that you you endorse guitars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a guitar named after you? Yes, I have a a signature guitar it's uh, -huh. uh made by carvin or they just okay. rebranded their name as, as a kiesel okay. and it's uh it's it's a model that they have that i've customized exactly oh, like cool. i like where yeah. all the the controls are a certain way and the mm -hmm. the finish and the the neck and it's so if if i would pick it up that's exactly what i want mm -hmm. and it's really exciting because you know you grow up playing a, a les paul mm -hmm. and, and of course that guitar is someone's signature guitar right so it, it's it's always an honor where i'm like yeah you know people are buying mm -hmm. my guitars that that i spec'd out that i like but they seem to like it as right. well so i think it's cool i think that means you you've must have arrived when you get something like you that know, nah, nah, nah. Success mama is, zaza <laughs> come on now you know success is always a strange thing because you know while you're in it you're in the eye of the hurricane right. so to speak so you, you don't really mm -hmm. sometimes you have to step out of it and and take stock in in where your life has went and where it's going. And yeah. Go, yeah, I guess I'm pretty lucky because mm -hmm. sometimes we can be pretty narrow visioned and like, well, I wish we it was this. But yeah. sometimes it is it is nice to stop and, and smell the roses or whatever. As they yeah, say. and you should because you're Italian. You're a Renaissance man inside, right? You uh, well, got to well, stop and smell those roses. And in sometimes. fact, so um, I have I actually have two bands. So oh. I have there's the American band, oh, which I'll be okay. playing with at. Uh, at the Civic here, mm -hmm. which is uh, Joe Chekai on drums okay. and Ray Liptek on bass. Okay. I want to get that in, and uh, it, it's a great lineup. Um, and I have another band that tours with me around the world. Okay. So, it, of course, they're Italian. Oh, so, wow, that's a nice. Walter Cherisani <laughs> and Enrico Cinchuzzi. And they're, they're oh, right, in, that's, that's uh, they're so right nice. outside of Rome yeah. and uh, in, a, in a place called Abruzzo. <laughs> and uh, so we... I'm in Italy a lot throughout the year yeah. because we'll either do tours of Europe that start in Italy okay. or we'll be rehearsing for something we're going to do. So um, I, I just ha I had to go get an Italian band because, you know, 
It's in the blood. Right? I had one at my wedding. And La Fiamma. Yeah, uh-huh. The Did you have flame. An accordion or something? Of or? course. My 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 grandfather played the accordion. So, you know, I mean, you it's get more time than that. No, you can't. I mean, you know, you really can't. And I actually have Weird Al's um, little accordion box that when he came here to visit. So, yeah. He gave it to you? Yeah. Or you stole it? He gave it to me. Okay. So, <laughs> So about the Civic, we're, we're happy to have you here. Give me a memory. Do you remember coming in here as a young kid, or did you uh, never are, are set you foot in here? Are you setting me up for something or no? No, no. All right, because here's why. Here's why. Here's my, here's my early, early uh, uh, memory of the Civic, yeah. and I have proof of this. So okay. back when I, uh, I started at Akron U, I, I don't know, I, I, obviously I was like 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. I... Um, Three Dog Night played here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Three Dog Night yeah. played here. Yeah. I've seen and, that in the archives. Um, okay. I was a roadie on the crew for Three Dog Night. Wow. Right? So if you go, that's in, impressive. If you go in that dressing room right up there. Okay. Right there. Yeah. And you look in the corner of the ceiling. <laughs> it says. It Neil says, Zaza, Neil Zaza was Zaza, here. 1984 or something like that. <laughs> that's great. So we're gonna my, have to go. My look. mark is yeah. here from way back when. Oh my God. So of course you know I'm like oh. Love to play yeah. the Akron Civic when I'm a young mm -hmm. kid. So it, mm -hmm. it's isn't that fun? It's though? an honor to play here. It well, really thank is. you. It's it really an honor is. to have you here too. And uh, we love it when when the locals get to come back and share the stage, like you know Chrissy and Devo and the Black Keys. It's always just we have so much talent here right. in Northeast Ohio, and it's always great to see when the talent can emerge yeah. and be Italian at the same time. <laughs> but that's besides the point. <laughs> Anyways, so where can people keep up with you? Um, all the regular social media outlets, you know, okay. neilzaza.com, okay. Facebook, Neil Zaza Music, uh, mm -hmm. forward slash Neil Zaza Music, Twitter, Neil Zaza, <laughs> Instagram. Well, you like your name, don't Neil you? Neil Zaza. <laughs> It's, it's all the all the regulars they could they could find out. So. That's great. Well, I'm I'm so glad you came by. Well, thank you. For I I feel good. like we're friends now. We're paisans. We're paisans. Yeah. Look at the <laughs> So, anyways, if you don't have a chance to come down to the Civic and see Neil, please look him up online and enjoy. He's one of the best guitarists I've ever heard, and we want you to come come down support him. If not, go and find him on the website. Neil, thanks again. Thank you so much. Okay, see you we'll soon. see you soon. Bye. -bye. Bye. You were extremely creative, even back then, how you spelled your name. <laughs> so ridiculous. Zaza, there's a signature right there. That's great.